upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Even there will be season of despair, seasons of discouragement. It doesn't give us any excuse before the Lord for failure, except we cheap on our salvation. We run back to the prayer of the Lord. We wait upon the Lord for renew of our strength until the stain returns to us again and the vision becomes clearer. And then we give ourselves a fact to the work of God. It's not a work we do for a season, it's a what we do for all seasons until the work must be done. What a sister must be saying to herself to have her strength renewed is as we conclude, we see in Psalm 27 and verse 13. Psalm 27, verse 13, he says, I had fainted. In other words, I would have given up unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, if not because I believe that by turning in God's presence, I will see his goodness again. Dry seasons will be over. The time of weariness and weakness will be over. He therefore spoke himself, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and it shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Sister, I say to you, the Lord will strengthen you. I said the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will uphold you. And to those of us who might be passing through that part of life, let return before God. Nobody is made of steel. We all derive our strength and power and mind from the Lord. And we do so daily. And when we do so before Him, in all loneliness and meekness of character and in all sincerity, He will renew our strength. We will not give up. We will keep on preaching. And the Lord will be exalted through us in the name of Jesus Christ. My sister, do you understand? Any other one, please? Yes, the brother over there. Good morning, sir. This, this morning, I learned that Peter, because he exercised fear, that was why he was, uh, he, he, he was drawn somehow. But now, sir, I want to ask, can we say that Peter, as at that time, uh, was not a believer? That made him to exercise fear he was a believer but my question is now if somebody is a believer and is a genuine child of god does that mean that uh, when challenges comes that person will not exercise fear when challenges come does that mean that that person will not exercise fear Let's look at the text once again and read. In Luke chapter Luke chapter 8 and verse 22. No, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew 14. I'm going to read from verse what the verse now? And verse 27. Let's read from verse 25. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down to the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? And when they were come unto the ship, the wind ceased. Hallelujah. You know, it is easier for us to criticize Peter as saying that he didn't have much faith. But there is a different experience for them all together. The Bible said the sea was boisterous, the sea was stormy. And if you see a stormy sea, the waves riding very high, however intrepid you may be, however courageous you may be, 
If you are not a very strong person in the faith, your faith will fail you. The Lord Jesus, in his power of mind, could say, you of little faith. Because as the Son of God and the Son of Man, he had conquered all that. And the subject we are treating today is, is power over nature. But for Peter, who is imagined as a disciple of the Lord, they must go through the process of faith building, of faith construction, before they could get to a point whereby he and John would stand before this and dream. And they said, don't say anything about God again. And they will say, we rather believe God and with man. There is a space of a few years between then and now. Sometimes it takes time before we can get to a point whereby we can stand upon the word of God. There will be no fear or anxiety in our hearts at all. Let's look at the example of a man in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and I read verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. It came to pass after this also, and the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them all that beside the Ammonites came again Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told you of Jehoshaphat, saying, they are coming a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Azontema, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. We may be confronted with challenges so that we fear, we exercise anxiety and panic. But that panic and anxiety must not make us to lose sight of the fact that our God has the capacity to deliver us. And what that we are passing through, God will deliver you. I said, God will deliver you. Tell your neighbor, God will deliver you. Say very well now. He will deliver us. Joshua feared air. But the fear didn't prevent him from going to God to pray. To call a fast. To sanctify a fast. Let's go to God. That's the way it is with believers. When we are imagined as Christians, there will be challenges and perplexities that are bigger than us. They should not drive us away from the Lord. They must draw to God's presence to turn before Him. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, and as in verse 6, I read it, Philippians chapter 4, and uh, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, be anxious about nothing. Be afraid about nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let a request be made unto God. And verse 7 says, And the peace of God, we pass it all understanding, shall keep your hands and minds through Christ Jesus. There comes a point that us has stand upon the Lord, we we'll walk with God now, we we'll have trusted Him, and God has lifted us up. There have been afflictions and tribulations and tempests God has carried us to. Therefore, we have expenses to fall back upon. Fear cannot overwhelm us anymore. Fear cannot drown us in anymore. We take every challenge in our stead, in our stead, that He would deliver us in time past. He would deliver us now, and in the future, He will deliver us. And truly, God will deliver us. But before we get to that stage, there will be time that we accept fear. We are anxious, we are worried. But don't allow your heart to be so worried you depart from the presence of God. Let fear knock you the presence of God. And then as you grow in faith, you grow in the love of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. The time will come that fear will go away. Instead of fear, you have faith. And this morning I pray that God will put his faith in your heart in Jesus' name. In John chapter 14, I read verse 1. John 14. I read verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. We believe in God. We put our trust in God. We allow whatever comes across our way to go to the presence of God and call upon the God of heaven. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou with me, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. The Lord will help us to overcome more challenges. Jesus didn't promise anybody that once you become my disciple, no tribulation, no tempest, no trouble. Uh -uh. The Bible tells us in Psalm 34, verse 19, many 
at the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered him out of them all in john chapter 16 and i read verse 33 he says these things are spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world ye will have the world ye shall have tribulation but be a good cheer have overcome the world and because he's a savior he's a lord and master he has overcome for us i ask you this question once he has overcome for us shall we overcome also i can't hear you we shall overcome you will overcome i will overcome the lord will give us the grace of way to overcome in jesus name yes challenges will come yes afflictions will come yes tribulations will come yes temptations will come yes trials will come but this was make us to stay with the lord wait upon the lord let fear drive you to god's presence and the time will come as you grow in grace and the lord of our lord and savior jesus christ faith will replace fear and every challenge will become like nothing before all in the name of jesus christ this morning we have learned a lot from the example of our civil lord and master and it remains an example for all time but there's something that I would like for all to note there in the text in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22. Matthew 14 and verse 22. It says, and I read, and straightway Jesus constrained the disciple to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the mortals away. And when he had sent the mortals away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. There's something we must interrogate here. And that is, why didn't the Lord accompany his disciples? His Lord. He's the Savior. He's the consummate King. Why must you go and pray? Because he knew that prayer was very vital to his ministry. And without prayer, he could not conquer nature. Even though he is God, incarnate in man. He still needed to pray that we're able to conquer nature. And it's a signpost to each and every one of us also. That at intervals, we must go back to the word of God and pray and seek the face of the living God. And as we go through the scriptures, you see the prayer path of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 3, in the, when he was being baptized in the Jordan, the Bible says, as he prayed, the heaven became opened unto him. And the word came from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I were pleased. In Luke chapter 6, when he was going to choose his disciples, he didn't leave it to chance. He took to God in prayer. The Bible says he was, he went to a man to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. In Luke chapter 9, we are told that on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Lord prayed. And his countenance was altered and the glory of god came down in luke chapter 22 at the garden of gethsemane when he was going to face the cross he didn't leave it to chance he prayed and an angel came down to strengthen him in the prosecution of the gospel we cannot achieve more without prayer we must give ourselves to prayer in that matthew chapter 14 matthew chapter 14 and verse 23 and when he sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. And as he came, he walked on the water. He had conquered nature. He had conquered tempest. He had conquered tribulation. And therefore, when they saw it, they were afraid. And when Peter saw it, it was a different experience to him. And then he asked him to come. His faith carried the faith of Peter until he looked away from the Savior, he looked at the storm. Our gaze must be on the Savior, our fixation must be on the Savior. Pray and pray and pray and pray, and glorious things will happen in the name of Jesus Christ. In your district, glorious things will happen. In my district, glorious things will happen. In our group, glorious things will happen. In every location, glorious things will happen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It can start even now, can't it? Let's rise up and talk to God in prayer. And the Lord will manifest a great power upon us. As you see him pray, as you see him tarry before God, as you seek the face of God, we also will pray. Can you open your mouth and pray? And say, Lord, give me the burden to pray. The consuming passion to pray. 
give me the grace to pray, to tie long in your presence, to wait upon the Lord, to plead my cause, to call upon the name of the Lord. And I sought for my man from among them. Who will stand in the gap and make all the earth that will not destroy the land? God said, I couldn't find anyone, therefore I will never know shall I destroy the land. Let's pray. The Lord will silence the mouth of the naysayers and the gainsayers. Jesus will reign as uh, reign supreme. Christ will be exalted. The Bible said, He must reign until all his enemies become a fool to you. Can we pray? Can we pray? For today, tell the Lord, enlist me. Tell the Lord, conscript me to be in the army of the Lord. I'm not just taking for granted. I will see the face of God. I will pray every day. I will see the face of God. I will tarry before the Lord. I will plead my call before the Lord. Yeah. Let it be that the Lord is exalted and magnified. The Lord will use you and I. Out of the mass of the Lord has perfected praise and understand. The Lord will do it for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray and call upon the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name we are praying. Our Father, we give you praise for your word that has spoken unto us. Oh Lord, your word will take root in our hearts. And I pray that every, every altar of fear and word and anxiety, you will burn it from our hearts in the name of Jesus. Such as we require to walk with you, to please you, to serve you, to declare your word. I pray, God, you guide unto us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that every storm before us, Every challenge before us, as we look up unto you and we call upon your name and thank your presence, we refuse to give up. All these tongues will disappear in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name, we have prayed.
As we continue in this morning's worship service, we will stand on our feet as we take the congregational hymn. Hymn 21, 2 1. Will your anchor hold? Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tide lifts and the cable strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? It is safely more till the storm withstand, but is well secured by the Savior's hand, and the cables passed from his heart to mine can defy the blood through strength divine. It will firmly hold in the straits of fair when the breakers have told the reef is near, though the tempest rave and the wide winds blow, not an angry wave shall abark or flow. It will surely hold in the floods of death when the waters cold chill our latest breath. On the rising tide, it can never fail, while our hopes abide within the veil. When our eyes behold through the gathering night, the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore, with the storms all past forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the pillows roll, fasting to the rock which cannot move, grounded, firm, and deep in the Savior's love. I'm going 
Take our second congregational hymn from hymn 102, Gospel Hymns and Songs, hymn 102, the Ela. On the cross crucified, in great sorrow he died, the giver of life was he. Yet my Lord was despised and rejected of men, this Jesus of Calvary. Price for healing was paid as those cruel stripes were made. Within Pilate's judgment all now is suffering afford perfect healing for all. This wonderful healer's smile. Came the leper to Christ, saying, Surely I know that thou, Lord, canst make me whole. When his great faith was seen, Jesus said, Yes, I will, and touched him and made him clean. He was healed, he has healed my sick soul, made me every wit whole, and he'll do the same to you. Is the same yesterday and today and forever. This Ela of men today. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Surely he bore our sorrows and by his stripes we are healed. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let's remain standing as we lift up our voices to heaven. Let's appreciate the God, our Lord Jesus Christ, that was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He bore our sorrows and he gave us healing. Even when the storms is raging, our Lord has given us healing. Let's worship God for the privilege of healing, the privilege of sonship, this privilege of salvation. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Brethren, in Jesus' name we have prayed. This is now time to give our tithes and offering. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, herewith says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open ye the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. A tithe is 10% of our salaries as income, our income as salary earners, and um, our wages as entrepreneurs. Let's raise up our hands as we give our tithe and offering. Our leaders are passing around. Would Lord Jesus, we thank you for these gifts of this day's Sunday worship service. We we'll pray, Lord, that as we have brought these little tokens to your house, we we'll pray, Lord, you will bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everywhere this token has come from, multiply the sources in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Our leaders will pass around. Just drop your offering as we continue in prayer. Today is the day of the Lord. Let's worship God because he has given us a gift of this day. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Brethren, today is Sunday. Let's shout a good amen. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Prayer for the nation. We have seen what is happening globally. There are storms raging in every nation in the world and here in our nation. The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. As children of God, we want to raise up our voice because the Bible also says where two or three are gathered is there in their midst. We want to silence the storms globally. We want to silence the storms in our nation. Every power that has grieved our nation, every storm that has grieved our nation, Every power that has gripped our nation, let's set it free with our voices. Let's raise up our voice to God. We don't want to complain again. We don't want to lament again. We want to say enough is enough as children of God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, 
Furthermore, when I came to trials to preach, Christ's gospel and a door was opened unto me. Now we pray for the minister of God, the convener of the GCK, the general superintendent of the Deeper Life Bible Church, and say, as he goes ahead to every nation and every state, and as his ministration goes and streams to 150 countries, we we'll pray that the doors will be opened. I said, we pray that doors will be opened. Let's open up our voices and raise them unto God. Doors will be open to our GS, the convener of the Global Crusade. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. The church of God will march ahead and the gates of hell will not prevail. I said the gates of hell will not prevail. We are going to pray that every mechanism of the evil, of the evil ones, of the demonic ones against the church of God, politically, socially, against his church, let's pray their plans will be disannulled. Let's raise up our voice and tell God. The church of God will stand strong. The church of God will grow strong. The church of God will march on. The gates of hell will not prevail. Socially, it will not prevail. Spiritually, it will not prevail. Politically, it will not prevail. No man, no association, no conglomeration, no fellowship shall hinder the growth of the church of God. Let's raise up our voice and tell God. Nothing can stop the power of the, of the Lord in the church. This church shall grow strong. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Finally, we pray that the word will come this Sunday morning, that there will be illumination and insights. I said there will be illumination and insights, that a word for every one of us will come out from the word man of God, and it will speak to our soul. Let's raise up our voice to God. There will be illumination, there will be insights. It will speak to us individually. It will bless our soul. It will heal us. It will save us. It will give us inspiration. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. I want a glorious Sunday. Amen. Yeah. Our Lord God who made the heaven and the earth. The God who seated in heaven and watched over us. We have committed a church, the nation, and our pastor into your hands. We pray, Lord, our prayers we are sent to you and answers we come speedily in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray again specially for this nation that your will will be done in this nation in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Let's have our seats in the presence of God. Let's tell somebody beside you, welcome to church. I think we are shy. I said, tell somebody beside you, welcome to church. We welcome everyone to service this Sunday morning. We have some very important people in our midst this morning those who are worshipping with us for the very first time. If you are here seated across the galleries and here in the down floor, you, and you are coming today for the first time to the Deeper Life Bible Church International Headquarters, please stand up on your feet. We want to see you. We want to welcome you. Let's welcome them specially. Thank you, and God bless you. And let's tell them that you are welcome in Jesus' name. 
I know our convert also from the GCK are also here. If you're also a convert from the GCK, uh, they just concluded Global Crusade with Kumuyi and also other GCK programs, you can also join them. Our ushers are beside you. They will give you a visitor slip. Uh, please fill them. We love you. We welcome you. The general superintendent of the church also beats me to tell you that you are welcome. I will pray that today will not be the last day in this congregation in Jesus' name. Please, when you fill this slip, return them to the ushers uh, quickly. Also, at the end of the service, please briefly come to the uh, front of the pulpit here uh, so that our leaders will attend to you. Don't worry, the buses will wait for you. Our weekly meetings remain the same. On Sundays, we come here for devotional worship service by 7.45. Every Mondays also, we have the Monday Bible study. This is a time when we come to study uh, in God's Word, line upon line, precept upon precept. It's always an expository and a systemic worship uh, Bible study. And this Bible study is anchored by our general superintendent, uh, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komui. I pray as you come, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Every Thursday, we also have the Thursday Revival and Evangelism Training Service. This service is always lo done locally. Please ask for those who came with you, and they'll tell you the district churches or location churches near you. Every Sunday evening, we also have uh, a special uh, cell fellowship for the adults and children, uh, home caring fellowship for the youths. It is youth home success fellowship and for the young adults it is ypf meetups this service for youth and children is by 4 p.m and for adults and the young adults is by 5 p.m and we pray that god will bless us all in jesus name the main
so when they heard him call out in vain and tenderly he said it is I Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Revelation of Jesus Christ. 
chapter 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, and of pearls, and fine linen, and purple, and silk, and scarlet, and all fine wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster, and all the company in ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians, and of pipers and trumpeters, shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Chapter 19 And after these things... I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. 
for true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down, and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen! Alleluia! And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God! All ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh.